Hey everybody, this is Pam Coey. I hope you're doing super well. So with the holidays coming, uh, you're probably thinking uh, it'd be really nice to be able to give some gifts to people that you really care about that come from your studio. And uh, I, so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna play around. So I wanna come into this with the attitude of play and the attitude of I'm just gonna be myself and whatever happens, happens. I just think having this uh, foundation of color and design will help you to make anything work. That's kind of the really cool thing about it. You can play all you want. You can make lots of messes. It can be kind of ugly, but as long as you know how to pull things together with uh, you know shapes that you love and, and mark making that you love and texture and all those things, if you've given that some thought, then you'll be able to you know make anything work. That's the really cool thing. So what I'm using today is I've got a sheet of Arches Oil paper and I've taped it off into two, four, six little squares. They're about six by six inches. And, uh, you know, like if you're giving these as gifts or if you're selling them at a gallery or whatever, obviously the presentation, you can frame them, you can mat them, you can, after they're dry, you can slip them into a little clear cello sleeve, whatever. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to experiment with something that uh, it's a product that I, I have. Um, these are oil sticks by uh, Paul Damaris. And I also use RNF pigment sticks, but I thought it'd be really fun just to play with oil sticks. I also have some cold wax medium that I have mixed with um, my G gel. Anyways, I'm going to pop this open and see what happens. I'm just going to play. So I hope you'll play with me. <laughs> And perhaps get out a sheet and divide it into some se sections, uh, maybe all the same size. So I've opened this up and you can see um, there's so many luscious, beautiful colors. And the first thing you think is, wow, you know, I love color, right? Like who wouldn't love color? But I'm gonna start with like just choosing uh, somewhat of a limited palette to begin with. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stay with it, but I'm gonna start that way. So I'm gonna choose some blues and then for accent colors, you know, maybe a little bit of green because the blues, like when, when you buy sticks like this, uh, when you have the sort of assortment that comes in a kit, like these two, you can also buy them individually, but you know, basically what you're looking at are tints, tones and shades, uh, variations of like one color family, like the blues and the purples and that kind of thing. So I'm picking colors that, that I think will go well together. Uh, just looking here at all the, little colors that are in here but I want to I don't want to go too crazy so I'm, I'm right now collecting the blues I've got one green I might have a little bit of warmth for contrast so maybe I'll grab this one they all have beautiful names like this one's dandelion and this one is this is a lovely color what is this one um, gold gold harvest gold okay so I'm going to pick out two warms mostly cools Although I, I, I don't have to use all oil sticks. I can also use my oil paints, right? So it's all, all compatible. So these are the colors right now. Um, and I'm gonna just like narrow this down. This one seems a little like not in that family. Which ones go well together? I'd say these three look good to me. And then like, I don't need so many colors. Narrowing it down a little bit more. All right, so now you can see I've got my paints on the side here. And uh, I've got a palette on the right hand side. I've got my mark making tools here. Here's I'm using just like a gray palette and I'm going to put some quick dry Gamblin white. It does really dry a little bit faster than normal titanium white. So I'll put some of that here. Always nice to have some white. I'm going to combine this with a little bit of my cold wax medium up to one to one, but you know, We'll see how it goes. Here's a little bit of black. I never need as much uh, black paint as I need white because the black paint goes a long way. Okay, so so I don't forget, I'm gonna put my cold wax medium and G gel uh, next to the paint so I don't forget to mix those together. Sometimes that happens and you're like, well, did I mix it with cold wax medium or not? This way I, know that I put the dab there and I'm just going to mix that up right away so it's ready to go but mainly you know I, I am mixing this but what I really want to do is play with these oil sticks because I've not used them uh, on a whole painting before I've used them in small quantities but you know 
this will be like a whole painting. I'll leave that there and then I'm going to mix my ivory black oil paint with a little bit of cold wax medium. So now I've got, you know, the ability to mix tints, tones, and shades uh, with, I can actually use these oil sticks. So let me just um, open the tubes, check them out. Okay, there's one. Now, like all oil sticks, um, they, they start with a pretty, uh, like, oxidized outer core, and you have to, like, peel that off. So if you have a razor blade, that will work. So my favorite way of getting that skin off of an oil stick is just a little bit of um, a blade and being very careful because you don't want to lose any of this precious oil stick. So you want to just um, skim off the oxidized skin. It comes off pretty easily and you can just toss that out. You don't really want to use that. It's already kind of dried. And okay, now it kind of peels off as you can see, like that. So there's one stick. And then, of course, I, I uh, want to check the consistency of this. Like, what's it gonna be like? Uh, now that I've uh, grabbed the top of the oxidized layer off, so let me just try that. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that's a really juicy pigment stick. I like that. I saved these tubes even though They'll never really prevent, you know, the oxidation, but it's just a nice clean way to keep your tubes. So I'll keep opening these up and let me just zoom in my camera a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit more on how I'm taking that top oxidized layer off. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there, there's a little closer close up, right? Here is, what is this called? Ultramarine. Okay, now, now I know that there are even recipes for making your own oil sticks, but I have not done that. And I find these really affordable. So that's the nice thing about these. And of course, I love the RNF pigment sticks. So you can pick and choose if you're uh, into that. Uh, if you like oil and cold wax medium and you like to work with pigment sticks that have the oil base, great. So I'm peeling it off and you know, the skin comes off really, really easily. And I just have a paper towel that I'm cleaning off my blade so this is going pretty quickly and these won't dry out during you know like like this color though is really close now I'm seeing that it's really too close I think I want to have go back to that lighter much lighter value even though it's going a little bit greenish that's fine I'm not going to worry about that so you get them out of the tube and you just start to um I go first horizontally over the top like this you can see how it just peels off and this happens whether, you know, when you first get them, they're gonna come with an oxidized layer. So even when you pop open the tube, whether it's these pigment sticks or some other brand like RNF, they're always gonna come this way. They're not gonna come fresh. The freshness is underneath the skin. Okay, so again, you can you can see I'm I'm peeling off that tip. You know, it gets a little blurry under my camera because I keep moving but um, I can even peel it off with my glove. It's very easy, it just pops right off. And keep track of my tubes. I do like to save them. Set them on the side for when I clean up. It makes cleanup a lot easier when I can just pop them right back into their tubes. Now I've got a green here. And because I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, uh, making these little paintings that, you know, they could be gifts or they could end up in a gallery. They're small. Uh, and uh, so my theme that I'm going to think about right now is I want to think of like layers, which in my membership group, we, we talk about the strata composition. Uh, and I've got a square format here. So just because I use a strata composition doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look like a landscape, but it certainly could have that feel. What are what else is layered? Uh, things like sedimentation, you know, if you were to look at a cross section of a rock wall and you're looking at all the sedimentation that's happened over time. Uh, so the strata composition is a really fun composition. Okay, so yes, I put some marks here. And, you know, my process is definitely to play. I got my nicely prepared oil sticks right here waiting and ready to go. 
I often start with mark making. So I'm going to do that just because that's the way I like to, you know, get uh, a feeling for the space in front of me and <clears throat> using various dry mark making tools helps me to feel space and what the space I'm dealing with. And so I'm gonna move this over. Um, anything goes from, I like to go from dark to light. I can go through the paint, doesn't matter. A lot of these marks are gonna disappear. Now I am thinking of like um, strata. So right off the bat, um, that's horizontal um, sort of segmentation of your space. I'm starting to think of these horizontal bands. And I've got <clears throat> charcoal, I've got graphite, I've got Derwent Ink Tense. This is Ink Tense, but being water soluble, uh, that's not going to really do anything unless I were to add water to it. And putting oil and cold wax over this or a pigment stick is not going to make it smear. So that's the nice thing about things that are water soluble when you work with oil and cold wax is they're not going to smear. So how about some very light marks? So we'll just do that all in the spirit of playing and exploring space. No expectations. Okay, so I, that's, I just wanted to get a feel for space and I think I've done that. Next. All right, I put a little bit of that blue there and I really love that dusty blue. Let me see what happens when I Huh, there's must have been some purple on my glove. But anyways, uh, that's that's quite lovely. I'm not even sure how that happened. Um, okay, let's try that again. I've got this blue and I'm gonna put a little bit, you know, just around. And I am uh, thinking again in, in terms of these strata. So um, I can go like this and, oh, you know, I think there's some purple in here. Very interesting. I wasn't expecting that. That was a little surprise. What I love so far, is how uh, I'm gonna show you a close up of my stick here. Okay, you can kind of see as I use this, um, it's like a softer, it's a beautiful soft tip. And so it's, so that what that means is when I put it on the paper, I might get some very thick impasto like textures and that's very cool. So I am enjoying that so far about these, just giving you some feedback. And this color is purple haze. All right, so like I mentioned, there's a bit of this uh, beautiful texture I'm getting from these sticks. And that purple, let me just see if that came from, it did. How many times can you, you know, uh, find a, a pigment stick that <laughs> it's one color, but then when you rub it, it turns into another. Wow, I've never seen that happen before. That is very cool. And I do love this beautiful texture. So I'm gonna like pile that on and make it a little thicker in some places. Okay, so each one is going to evolve on its own, but I'm uh, sort of just treating it, you know, as one, one big thing right now. All right, let me go into this darker color. This is ultramarine, very vibrant color. And I can go light, and then I can go dark. I can go thick, and I can go thin. I can go up, down, you know, any shapes that appeal to me. This one has more of a, a line that has shape in it. Here's one that has um, kind of a curly cue. I'm varying how much pressure I put on this. And the other thing I might want to do is um, put some, I'm going to mix up some gray. I've got white here. I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, gray before I go too far here. And the reason for that is I've got this white paper showing and a lot of times I like to just get some paint down on there even if it's a very light value and that's what this is right now. But I haven't put many marks down yet with the oil stick so I'm going to just grab my Messermeister here and I've got just some paint. Let me show you the palette. Um, here is my palette with gray paint. It looks really white, but um, it is a little bit, has a little bit of black paint in it. So I'm just going to uh, put that down here. 
and see if I can just add a little bit of something to this raw paper. And my marks still show. They blurred a little bit, but you know, that's fine because I can always restate them later if I want to. Okay, so just wanted to get, you can kind of see that this one's a little bit more gray. I know you can't see that very well, but let me just mix up a little bit more. So now I might even have a mid-tone gray down here. My mid tone, even in the camera. Now, instead of my Messermeister, which is this bowl scraping tool commonly found on Amazon, or also on my resource page at artandsuccess.com, but I'm going to use a silicone tool, and instead of going over broadly like that, I'm just going to scoop this over and I'm going to come at it now with. Um, got the silicone tool and I'm just going to put down some gray paint um, a little bit sort of haphazardly um, over some of these areas. Not thinking, just playing. Maybe it'll go over some of that paint and maybe it won't. Doesn't matter. A lovely mid tone gray. Brush it into that blue a little bit. So again, just plain. So I go lighter in value. I'm gonna try and see how far I can go. You know, this is uh, when you work with cold wax and oil, obviously it doesn't dry quickly. And so as soon as it gets really, really too wet, usually you stop and you let it, you know, set up. So um, I want to see how far I can get with just the wet and wet, you know, in this one recording. And then I'll let it set up and come back and see where we're at. Now, this is interesting. Notice how I put, put wet paint over these very wet oil sticks. And they are maintaining some integrity there. Um, there is still that loop-de-loop -loop thing going on, which is kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that would hold up to my silicone tool here, but that's a nice surprise. And I'm just gonna keep blocking in really just a tone so that when this does set up and dry, I'll be able to go in on that again. Add some mid-tone to this one. So again, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of bands, like um, stratus, what I call that. And, you know, I'm dragging this through like this, making marks. Um, that allows the marks below that to show. That's kind of fun. And pretty soon I'm gonna need more paint. But I, whenever I squirt out paint, and I'm working like this with cold wax and oil. Uh, of course, you try to estimate how much you're going to need, right? But I always challenge myself. And if I have leftover paint, I challenge myself and say, well, I really don't want to have to store the paint. So maybe I could, um, I could either start a slot board or maybe I can put more paint on whatever it is I'm the painting itself uh, or start a new slot for it. So those are just two different things I can do. So now I've added quite a bit of this gray and I'm gonna move back into the color. Why not? I've got these gorgeous blues and I threw all my trash into a, a metal trash can because that's what you should do when you work with cold wax and oil. And I've got this lovely um, kind of a greenish blue I haven't done anything with that yet, so let me just try that. It seems like it might be a relative of cerulean blue. What is this called? Oh, thalo blue. Okay. So again, luscious paint. That's really fun. Now notice I'm working into some very wet paint and uh, no problems at all with this pigment stick. It's 
it's in for that. It's, it's okay to do that. And that's really nice to see. So I'm just kind of doing my mark making that I love um, so much. And I can even set up a pattern down here of this color. Uh, come into this one and notice all of these will be related because uh, I'm keeping the palette simple. I call this a simple, uh, pretty limited palette here. And that pretty much assures that you'll have harmony. Now here again, uh, this color being a uh, stable blue, but I'm just noticing there's a little bit more skin coming out. So you just wanna peel that off as you go, as you work down the stick and the stick gets shorter. So far things are looking, you know, pretty high key. So I was mixing up some more white. Keeping it simple. Let's make a little bit more gray. And then here's my pigment sticks. Okay, let's put that off to the side again. So you can kind of see I'm I'm kind of thinking in terms of strata. And that's a fun way to be thinking. Maybe I'll take some of this blue and fill in some of these marks. Um, just kind of restate, right? Now they these marks did make it through with that gray. Um, a little bit working in here. Just enjoying the process of this wet into wet, you know? Like what, what can we make here? Um, when I think, and I work with strata, the strata composition a lot with my encaustic monotype. Um, somehow when I'm on a hot plate, it just right away kicks in and I start to think in terms of strata. And uh, if you can come in and you can, uh, you know, change anything that if it's going horizontally, you can make it go vertically. But right now what I'm doing is mixing a little bit of that blue with this phthalo blue, just to um, merge those colors together a little bit. And now I've got green. I haven't used any green yet. Now, do I want to use a lot of this or a little? Probably not a whole lot because it's kind of an accent color. It's just kind of fun to introduce a color that's really not much a part of that palette. So notice I'm being very uh, kind of miserly with this color at this point. Just a little for accent and adding a little bit of warmth. This color is called Wayne's Olive. That's pretty. So again, drawing, you can draw with these pigment sticks. That's one of the beauties of a pigment stick is to draw. Now I could put a bit more green down here. And I also have one more color to add. This uh, beautiful, this is Harvest Gold. This is the piece that kind of fell off. Let me just add a bit of that. And this mixed with the gray will be very beautiful, I think. So I'm, these are predominantly cool, this is blue, but a little bit of warmth in these. Just accent right now. And I can always knock back the amount of warmth if there's too much. Now I've got it, uh, I've been using this little clump in my fingers, right? And now my fingers are full of this paint. I'm not gonna waste that. I could just put it into a paper towel, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, work into these grays and warm them up a little bit. See what happens. That's quite lovely. All right, and maybe I'll, I like to use my fingers and sometimes I'll add just like here's some white and you notice that I was adding gray before, but now I'm adding white. But um, these are really lovely. And again, these are called Paul Damaris pigment sticks. And I will list the links so you can find them and try them out for yourself. These are very luscious. Here's a quick scan. All these paintings. You can see how luscious the paint is. Look how thick and juicy that is. Isn't that cool? Very fun. These pigment sticks have a beautiful quality to them. They're fun to draw with. 
with a little bit more pressure, you can mush them into your paper or panel and get this beautiful thick paint. And there's how everything, all six paintings are coming along.